Adam Robinson also uh, will be joining the call. So this is the BNI Brunch Working From Home Dream Team. We've got mm -hmm. James Waller from Claritel. We're, Hello. I'll let you introduce yourselves. Go around and tell us who you all are, please. Hi, everyone. I'm Jay. We run a small business called Claritel based in Blackburn, and we specialise in telephone systems. Vicky? Hi, I'm Vicky McLean. I work for a company called Optimal People Business Services, um, which is an outsourcing HR provider. Jenny? I'm Jenny Hardman. I'm from Business Simplified. I am a business coach and trainer. We also have Adam Robinson, who is trying to get on the line, so hopefully you'll be able to make it shortly. So... Um, the reason that we're we're running this this little session is obviously that in the last forty eight hours, three days, the world has turned slightly upside down. I think now that the schools are closing as of Monday, there's going to be a, a lot of people started working from home last week, uh, but now even more of them are going to be working from home on Monday, and it's seriously going to change the world of work. And we want to just to share our experiences of, of how we've made that transition ourselves, how, how our businesses normally work, working from home, um, and see if we could offer a bit of support. If anyone has any questions, we'll we'll be happy to answer those. Um, so just, I'll go first. I'll say how, how our business manages and works from home, and then again, we'll go around the people that are here. Then we will start um, answering some of the questions from people who are watching. So um, I, my business is Grow Traffic. We are a, an SEO digital marketing agency. So we help people, help businesses uh, grow their customer base through their online profile. So whether that's using Facebook or Twitter, LinkedIn, using the website, we help businesses get more traffic to the website and therefore get more customers. Because of the way that we work, we have always been quite a flexible business. I started the business, well, my husband started the business actually, but I kind of took it over and, and, and kept it going, mainly because I had a, a, an issue with my back and so I needed to be able to work flexibly. I also had a little boy at primary school and I needed to be able to work my hours around my back problem, my pain levels, my little boy when he needed me. And I wanted something that I could do flexibly. So I started doing freelance copywriting. And then, to cut a long story short, it all just grew from there. Um, we started taking on employees. My sister joined the business. My husband got made redundant. He came back and joined the business. Uh, we did get an office. So we have got an office in Burnley. There's now six of us all together. But we don't all work out of the same office all the time. Some people are based in Yorkshire. So two of them are based in Yorkshire. Four of us are in Lancashire. We've always had the ability to have flexi working. So if people need to go and get the kids, they can leave a bit early. If people want to, um, you know, take time off to do commitments, pick up a prescription, various things like that. We've always had the ability to do that within the business. Um, and people have worked from home if they wanted to. But the default has been in the office, work from home is an exception. However, because of that, because of the way we've had those practices and those systems in place, we've been very fortunate in that over the last week, we have been able to say, OK, let's just all work from home. We've all got laptops. We've all got, you know, HR policies and procedures and stuff already there. Our insurance covers it. We're, we're sort of all set up. I, I become, the systems that we use, so, so Zoom, uh, WhatsApp, Office 365 have always enabled us to work remotely. So it hasn't been that big of a jump from us. The The thing that worries me is um, as, a, as a team is having that, that kind of team cohesion. How do we keep that team cohesion going when everybody works remotely? We've got some members of staff who absolutely love working from home and we've got some members of staff who absolutely love working in the office and get cabin fever. So those are some of my concerns now is A, how do we keep the business ethos going? But also how do I, how do I make sure that my staff stay sane and stay happy and, and are kind of weathering this when they're when we feel like we're all a little bit out on a limb so that's where i'm coming from that's my personal experience we'll we'll go around and get the uh, the view of the others that are here first so jay do you want to tell me how your business is fixed yeah so we are a company based in blackburn um we design install maintain telephone systems uh, voice over ip systems that are based in the cloud but over the last 
few weeks, two weeks in particular, I think all we've been doing is um, enabling customers that want to explore or deploy um, flexible working or people working from home. Um, we've seen a lot of customers wanting to know more about how they can uh, look at different options. So it could be a simple thing, making a divert to your mobile so you can keep taking those calls. So that's the simplest way to do it. But the bit that we, 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 we've we done lots of this week is um, providing mobile apps on the mobile phone so that you as a business can take calls in the same way as you would do um, SAS at your desk. And the difference with that is if you ring out from the app, it actually displays your, your office number. It also then allows you to transfer calls in between your team as you would if you were sat in the office. Um, we're finding that, especially with schools being closed, um, a lot of our clients have um, fewer people in the office, if any at all. Um, so I think yesterday we were with a customer where they have typically between 60 and 80 people in the office on a normal day. Um, but yesterday they had about 12. Um, and we've now deployed um, the mobile app to every single user so they can operate and talk to each other and their clients in the same way as they would do if they were in the office. Um, we've also got that solution in place, but like you said, Rachel, um, it will be interesting next week because we actually um, won't be working from the office either. So how do you keep up that structure? Do you have a morning brief? And if, if so, video call is what we, we're going to be using to kind of have our morning huddle, as we call it, um, to kind of create that structure for the day. Look at the priorities. Who do we need to get back to? Um, and, and and things like that. But how do you keep that morale up? How do you... Um, I personally like working from the office. I can't work from home normally because I've got the kids running around in the background and, and, I'm, and I'm sure that that's going to be a, a weird transition for me. I don't know how, how you guys feel about that. So um, it's going to be an interesting week. I think as time goes... Um, we will evolve as businesses um, to kind of retain that continuity. Um, but how we do that will be interesting. I don't think there's a textbook um, process. I think you'll find your feet, you'll do things that are good and you'll carry on um, mm -hmm. and you'll start doing things that don't seem to work. Yeah, I think that's absolutely it. A lot of people are in uncharted territory, so it's going to have to be a little bit of suck it and see, isn't it? We will, we will come back to talking about the systems that we use to keep um, all our staff engaged in a little bit, but we'll go to Vicky next, please. Yeah, I work for a, um, a HR outsourcing business called Optimal People Business Services. So um, obviously, you know, we support many clients across many industries, uh, mainly West Yorkshire um, and Lancashire. And what we are from a flexibility perspective, we already sort of have that in place with the with the the, the, the employees that we do have. Um, but it's absolutely imperative to us to keep that flexibility and support our businesses and clients with with that as well. Um, you know, so so we, we have um, as of this week, um, probably Wednesday, started working from home as a team. So Jay, just very much like you, we've implemented um, huddles. Uh, we're using Teams to, to keep in continual contact as well. Um, you know, and it's it's about trying to educate and support our, our that you know our clients we, we brought on many new clients actually um in the last few days and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing work coming in supporting clients with looking at temporary changes to policies um around traveling around working from home um i recently did a blog um which is a website as well now to work from home and keep yourself in the because that's something that's really really important mm. fab thank you vicky we'll come back to contracts as well in a bit uh, Jenny, sitting on your sunny balcony. <laughs> on the balcony, I wish. Um, <laughs> do you know what? I, it, business coach and trainer. So I help businesses put in process, look at their marketing to engage new clients, look after their existing clients in, in effect, you know, essentially, sorry, not effective. Well, yeah, effectively and essentially um, gain more profit. Um, now, I already work from home. Um, I've got six children home at the moment. So I'm probably one of the people where many things are not going to change for me, which is, which is which is good in a way, but as you can hear in the background, you hear people shouting, screaming, mum, 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 mum. Um, this is something that's going to be a challenge, I think, for a lot of people, because generally when I work from home, the children are at school. Um, they're all off school, so I've got six children off school, all running around the house, uh, driving me absolutely bonkers at the moment. 
Um, now, I've already transitioned all my clients from um, face-to-face onto Zoom. We use Zoom, which is absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of tools out there to get online uh, because at the moment, a lot of people are needing more support in terms of what can I do? How can I get online? How do I engage more customers online that stop coming into the shop? How do I do that? So my week has been more busy than I've been, I think, in the last three years, which is absolutely fantastic. But I am worried myself about how do we manage this when I've got, I mean, I've got one on an Xbox, one still asleep on the couch, one on a laptop. <laughs> it's kind of, there's just kids around, you know, and I think a lot of people are worried about that. How do we manage with the kids? And I think most people out there in the, in the world kind of understand that we are all at home. We're going to be in isolation. We've got the kids at home. We're all on the understanding basis. For me, it's more, how do I manage my own mental health with six kids running around? I'm used to them being here, but when you're trying to focus on helping someone doing a live video like today, and I've got kids shouting from room to room, it's just, how do we manage that? Other than tying them all up and putting them in a cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, was doing a, I was doing a Zoom call yesterday. If I was doing a webinar, for two hours yesterday afternoon and my dog was here she was sat with me she was perfectly quiet fast asleep the bin men went past and she went berserk and I couldn't stop her and so it is it's not just kids there's dogs and all sorts of distractions going on at home aren't there yeah yeah and I think I've had two phone calls why I've been on this live already so my, my video yeah. keeps going off <laughs> <laughs> yes yes the joys of technology I think um, what it is is do you know what we've kind of I've, I've seen a lot of people panicking and i'm going off script a little bit a lot of people are completely and utterly panicking and and i suffer from ptsd and, and severe anxiety and, and one big thing that i've learned over the last few years is if you can't change it worrying about it and panicking isn't going to change it we've mm -hmm. kind of just got to breathe go with the flow and see what happens but i know a lot of people are are you know, losing their job. My brother's been laid off at the minute. He's got, you know, a little boy and everything. So there's a lot of people that are, are panicking and it's how do how do we support the wider communities in in this in this as well, not just us and businesses. I think that that is a very good point, and I will absolutely come back to that uh, because that is one of the things that I think has shocked me the most this week has been the response and the level of panic that, that people are having. But um, Adam has just jumped back on. I can only pull four of you at once, so I'm going to hide Jay. No offence, Jay. And I'm going to put Adam on. Has, has he come back? Where's he gone? Or maybe I'm not. There we go. See, we're having cream eggs for breakfast. That's what happens when this uh, this crisis happens. <laughs> yeah, diet goes out the window. Good morning, Adam. Are you okay? Morning, Adam. Morning, Adam. Can you hear and see us all right? I don't think no. he can hear us. Adam? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I'll hide. I'll hide Adam. And I'll put Jay back on. Um. Right. So anyway, that that is one of the things that I do want to come back to is is the response. Uh, I, as I say, I went into Monday, um, thinking this is all right. We can all we can all work from home. We'll we'll be okay. Um. You know, the business will carry on. Nothing will be impacted. And then, um, the kind of the measures that came in at the press conference i think that was monday night tuesday we lost two clients wednesday we lost another client people just having that panicky response of we don't know what's coming so we're going to put the brakes on and we're going to close down as i say we're in quite a fortunate position because we we do the way the business is set up and the position that we're in financially we, we've got a, a little bit of leeway in the bank we're, we're going to be all right for a little while until some of the uncertainty passes but i am chair of the bake up business association which is not as grand as it sounds um and i know a lot of the businesses there they're brand new fledgling businesses they've been going for for two or three months they're cafes they're, they're pubs and restaurants they, um, you know, they, they people have stopped going in. They haven't got the cash reserves to, to to keep going. So businesses are already suffering, and then that has a knock on effect on everything else. You know, my, my sister was talk, telling me about her cleaners. Her everybody has so her cleaners business that she's taken six years to build up has gone within forty eight hours because nobody wants to pay for a cleaner if they don't know whether they're still going to be in a job in a few weeks. Um, 
So I think that that um, that's one of the great things about being in the networks that we're in is that you've you've got that business support network. But I have found that most of my week has been spent talking to businesses, clients and, and non-clients and, and just reassuring people and saying, we kind of got to carry on. We've got to keep going. The world is still going to be here in three, four, five months, whenever this thing ends. Uh, we've got to we've got to keep going and keep things going. So how how's the response been? How have you lot felt the response has been? Uh, we'll go Vicky first. Sorry, I'm muting myself then because uh, the dog's <laughs> barking because somebody's knocked at the door. Sorry, say that again. I would mute myself. Yeah. Yeah. Say that again, sorry, Rachel. So how how have you found the response from, from your clients and the customers that you're working with? Are, are people panicking or are, are most people on the whole being quite... Uh... You know what, um, uh, in terms of our current clients, it's not more panic. It's more about advice that we can give about working from home. But we, we look after, you know, across many industries. So we do look after people in the care sector, manufacturing sector, um, where, where there isn't work from home. So that's more about trying to support them and keep their... their, their you know themselves safe um, and their family safe because ultimately they need them to be well to be in work and um, the other side of it is we are picking up quite a lot of new clients that unfortunately are in a situation where they're asking questions around layoffs and redundancies and that's quite scary really so you know initially you know we're, we're, we've been sort of taking free giving free advice um, initially to businesses that do call into us or to people business services about you know is this the right way you want to go um, you know and we're happy to support with that um, but there's certainly a lot of small businesses out there that are looking at layoffs, short time working um, and potential redundancies as well, which is quite scary for small businesses, I have to say. But it is. It is. It's not it's not just scary. It's heartbreaking, really, when you, you, you never you never employ somebody thinking you know obviously in the back of your mind you have that that thing of you know things might go wrong and we might have to make somebody redundant or whatever but you don't employ somebody with that intention and also you know when you're a small business your employees become part of your family you know you're, you're spending a lot of time with them you're talking to them day in day out they're, they're there helping you grow the business they're they're part of it it's not just you know I know I don't mean to be derogatory but you know if it was McDonald's and you just there's so many employees that you just and if you get sacked from McDonald's, you're going to get a job at KFC the next day and you're going to be all right. Whereas it's not like that in, in kind of running small businesses. So there is, I think there is a lot of panic out there about that. Um, Sorry. Sorry, Rachel, what did you say? Jay, how are, how are you finding things? How have your customers and clients and stuff been responding? I think that we look after a wide range of clients. I don't think so he's there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear him and see him. Can you not? Oh, no. All right, hang on. Technical glitches, eh? Oh, no, it's seen that you're still there. Yeah. Hang on, I'm hydrate, showing stream. Give me one sec. It's back, okay? Ah, can you hear me now? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Uh, Jen, can you hear me? I, I don't I think Jen can. You can't. We can see him. Okay. Oh, so people are saying they can see you. Oh, <gasps> just me. Um, so we've got a wide range of clients, and this we found that we look after care homes, and they're on lockdown, so there's some uncertainty there. We look after restaurants, and they are finding it really difficult, really stressful for them. They've had a loss in revenue. Um, and they can't really work from home, restaurants, manufacturing, we found that um, they are struggling. Um, if we go into a lockdown process, um, they are worried about um, situations like that. On the same token, we've, we look after accountants, white collar clients, and they are trying to adapt with um, a new way of working. Um, I think that everybody's gonna have some form of a loss of revenue, I think ourselves included. Um, and it's just survival, I think. And it's just trying to um, be innovative in any which way, like this possibly, showing a presence, um, being there to kind of support and help each other, um, kind of discussing or sharing things that are working for us with, with other people. Um, but it, it's, it's mixed at the minute. I think there is panic. Um, and I think that um, people will find their feet um, over the next few days, next few weeks, and. And find a way to adapt and kind of survive. 
do you think that the if you look at kind of your clients as a as a whole your client base as a whole do you think that most of them have been fairly positive towards being flexible to making their staff work from home because i think with a lot of companies their initial reaction has been you know oh well we can't we can't work from you know we have an office that's where our staff work um, and it, it takes a little bit of mind shift if you like for people to say well actually we possibly could we could let some we could you know change our working practices have you found any of and this is to any of you have you found that people have been quite responsive to that? i think i think it depends on um the, the the sector that they're in i think everybody's trying to be positive but we'll look after certain clients that service schools for example and um we had a conversation on tuesday morning to say all our business has just stopped all the revenue stopped because if schools close on friday there's nothing that we can supply into schools yeah. so you can be positive but that client thinking how long is it gonna last yeah. how long the school's gonna be off for if it's two weeks we could work with that if it's four weeks it would be a stretch if it's three months um, it's reality isn't it so some clients are affected more than others and some clients are positive we're trying to be positive we're trying to ride the storm as it were i think you have to remain positive i think you have to keep going if you can um there's got to be a level of continuity and i think that's the kind of discussions that we've been having with all the customers that we've been speaking to this week yeah it is absolutely it's, it's positive positive mindset and if, i think if we as businesses are are positive and try and kind of coach our clients so that we can help them do it and that that jenny leads me perfectly on to you <laughs> what are the conversations you've been having with yours have they been quite positive towards it this week yeah, I mean, I work a lot with, um, you know, business directors on their mindset and marketing. And I've worked quite hard over the last couple of years to to only onboard clients that are open minded and on that route to being positive anyway. I don't generally work with people that are in that victim mindset because I find that they drag me down as well. Um, so all my clients, sorry, I've got an extra person. Um, all my uh, All my clients have been absolutely positive. I've got people that have you know, paid for more sessions because they want more support. Because no, it's not about, you know, going forward with a plan that we already had and putting processes in place. We've had to divert a little bit. We've gone a little bit off piece. How do we get you now online? What systems do we need to put in place? Yes, you can get something to eat. Um, <laughs> what systems can we put in place? What can we do to get you online? What can we do to get you in front of those customers online rather than in person? So it's, it's diverted a bit over the last week or so, but all massively positive um i was already launching something called the director development um, academy which is due to go live on the first of april and it was for, for small businesses that couldn't afford a business coach couldn't afford the support couldn't afford the training i'm still pressing forward with that because i think now more than ever people need it um, they need that support network they need that support group where they can access how do I get online? How do I set up a Facebook page? How do I do Facebook ads? How do I do SEO? How do I set up a website? People need that as a, as a central hub. Um, so I, I'm I'm positive. Do you know what? Things are going a wire. I've got um, my eldest daughter um, is heartbroken. She is having panic attacks. She was, she was having um, she was set to be an A star student in her GCSEs this year. And GCSEs have cancelled. There's no way to yes. what's there, just cancelled. Um, so she's absolutely heartbroken. So for me, it's kind of how do we, how do we work with our families and the people around us to go? Well, do you know what? Yes, your GCSEs are cancelled, but what what's going to come out of this? What is you've not got the stress of the results now. You've not got the stress of the exams. What are the positives we can look at with this? People are very quickly. Oh my God, the world's falling apart. You know, I've not got this. I've not got that. That that's great. Well, let's go back to basics. And I know this might sound hard to a lot of people. Have you got a house that you're living in? Brilliant, fantastic. Can you ring your mortgage people and say, can I have a break? Because I know that's in place now. They are giving you a break on your mortgages if you need to. Landlords, if you've got um, a landlord, I've got a landlady. She texted me and said, don't worry about rent if you're struggling. Absolutely fantastic. If you've got landlords, ring them and explain the situation. Yes, we will have to pick this up at a later date. We will have yeah. to pay back because obviously they've got their bills to pay. But if you are struggling, reach out to the people that you are, you know, that you, you're paying each month. I know the the governments have got a lot of grants and low cost, well, not percent loans that are available for small businesses as well. 
the downside is for sole um, entrepreneurs, um, you know, one man band limited companies, there's nothing currently out there at the minute which is mental because we're the ones that underpin the UK in the economy with the small businesses. You know, the Federation of Small Businesses is working really, really hard to push some new rules through so we can get some breaks as well. There are a lot of things coming through, but we as a, as, as a nation, we're not prepared for this. It's all come on really, really fast. And I think that's why people are panicking. There will be things in place. If anybody's struggling with money, um, if you've lost your job, you've been made redundant or you're not working, um, you can get statutory sick pay from day one which they are looking at putting up, aren't they, Vicky, to a, to a higher rate. I think it's an extra 20 quid a week. You can also access universal credit. The, um, the rules have been relaxed for applying for universal credit. So if you are panicking and struggling, please, please do reach out and have a look at what you can actually access. The government are not going to let everybody just starve and lose their houses. It's, it, it, it can't happen. So there are a lot of things out there. So take a breath. What have you got? Um, and I'll, I'll just quickly tell you what we're doing today. It's my it's my eldest boy's birthday today, so he's 15 today. So, um, he's he's at home going. Well, I can't go anywhere. We're gonna go. Do you know what? We don't have much family time because I'm always working there at school. We're gonna go to Brock Bottom, take the dog. We're gonna go swimming in the river. Do you know what? Because we can, because we're going to have some family time. I will worry about this tonight, tomorrow, Monday, because this time with these guys now, I'm going to utilise it because I don't get much of it. So look at what you have got and what you can do. Worrying about stuff isn't going to make it any better. I know that sounds really hard. No, I, that's absolutely right. And I, that's one of the things that I, you know, like I say, I started Monday, I had a really positive mindset. Tuesday wiped me out. Um, and then Wednesday, I thought, you know what? No, we look at, we are as a business, you know, we're not, it's not great. If this carries on, the business will not continue. But relative to other businesses, we are in a very fortunate position. And like you say, you know, you look around. I've, I'm very lucky that I live on the edge of the East Lancashire Moors. I can go out and play with my horses down in the field. And no matter what's going on in the world, out there doesn't change. So there is, and this is, I think this is going to be one of the key things for employers and people because what is um is it can be mentally draining, especially if we feel like we're in lockdown. We'll feel like we're quarantined. So you know, being you get you get cabin fever. Everybody gets cabin fever. Even people who like working from home, you can't sit in your house all the time and just work away. You've got to do things that are going to take your mind off it and make you happy. Whether that be going out for a walk, walking the dog, playing with the kids. You know, you can't really go to the cinemas at the minute, but there's there is so much stuff that you can go out, go for a drive like they were used to do in the 80s but do do stuff that takes you out of the house and make you happy or just you know just switch your mind off from work and watch a film we have, we have family film night every friday and we just watch a film on netflix but it's that it's that mentality of this is our time that we're going to relax and we're not going to think about anything else that is going to be absolutely crucial for people because i, I, I remember I, when i I on, Mickey. For me, um, one thing that I would absolutely say is that structure is really important, and whether you do have your kids at home or not, um, you know, for your own mental attitude, you know, in terms of getting up, getting dressed, getting yourself prepared for work, having a plan in terms of what you're going to do that day, so that you can, you know, the tick box exercise is fantastic for anybody that needs to feel like they've achieved something that day. Um, and and it's mm. equally to your point, Jay, it's really important to understand the expectations of your employer because this is not sort of a busman holiday in some respects. We've still got to support our employer so I think, you know, in, in terms of bringing in work and keeping the cogs running and supporting our clients. But equally, you know, just having that structure at home for the children as well, you know, reading time, school time, play time, getting out and about. You know, we all need that level of structure for our own mental well-being. So it's certainly, you know, that's something that's really, really key. Definitely. And, and, yeah, the, one of the things that this is going to be, you know, some of us have work from home or our staff have worked from home, but the, like the difference was that the kids were at school and this is going to mm. be like the summer holidays where the kids are not. Um, and I found that structure, having that structure is really helpful. for. So for my little boy, I say to him, right, I'm going to work now. I'm going to be working for three hours. 
um, and then I'm going to be free. And, and then he knows he has a time limit there and he knows when he can come down and we're going to do something different or something's going to happen or how long he has to <laughs> keep quiet and stay out of the room. Um, but yeah, I think that that a structure and routine, how, how have you guys found that in terms of structure and routine? Is that going to be key for you, Jay? I think so. I think... Oh, just turn that down a little bit. Um, it, it, it's going to be a culture shock for us because although we do have certain days where we work from home, some people are at the office, we've never had a, a phase where everybody's working from home for the foreseeable. So it's a mindset change. Um, yeah. uh, like you said, kids in the background, how am I going to cope with that? I don't know. Um, so I think Vicky, you mentioned structure, I think that's absolutely key. So we're going to have a morning. So we'll have a video call just to replace the boardroom. We'll have internal messaging on our CRM so that if we've got a quick message to get across, that's how we'll operate. Um, we're a bit luckier because we've got the tools in place and everybody has that and, and, and they don't need to, but I like to check how many calls are coming in. How many calls are being answered? How quickly are they being answered? How many calls are being missed? If they're being missed, are we being able to call them back quickly? Um, so that's something that we've been working on. And this afternoon, we're going to do some exercises to kind of make sure everything's working right and correctly. And then, um, you know, we'll, we'll try it properly next week. But I think it's, I'm looking forward to it in some respects. And in some respects, I think, how long will I last? Um, I, Sit in one place, um, let alone in the same room for the whole day. I don't know, but like you say, I think you've got to break it up a little bit. Um, keeping uh, your mind fresh, go for a walk if it's possible, um, change the scenery. Um, but it's not just about me. How are the rest of the guys feeling? Um, they're motivated. Um, have we got the right expectations set? Um, so these are the things that I've been thinking about. And Vicky, you mentioned that. Um, do we actually use that time? Is it going to be quiet on the phones? Mm, what can mm. we do that we never get a chance to do? Are we going to work on the website, for example? Are we going to uh, tweak our marketing? Are we going to look at our social media? Are we going to do more social media because it's something that we never really do? So in a different way, I think I, I'm looking at that ev uh, ev evolution. I think I'm looking forward to doing things that I never get a chance to do. Yeah, um, That's what I'm going to do next week. Hopefully that will have a positive impact a positive change and hopefully we can come out stronger with different skills. I'm going to read a little bit more, which I never get a chance to read. Mm -hmm. um, so it, hopefully it will make us better on the other side. And, you know, we just hope and pray that it doesn't last too long and we just support each other in that process. Yeah, um, I think you touched on one. Well, there's two things that I want to come back to. One of them is the is the kind of systems and and processes that that people are going to put in place. And I'll try once more to bring Adam in. I don't know whether Adam can you hear us? Oh, you can. You can hear us. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna just bring Adam in. So if I just hide Jay, let's just see if I can do this again. Let's let's give him one last try. Adam, can you hear us? I can't hear you though. <laughs> no. Technology is fantastic when it Isn't works. It, yeah. <laughs> so professional and slick here, aren't we? <laughs> it's it's all trial and error, though, isn't it? Like you say, we're all there's a lot of us that are new to these systems. This Be Live is a relatively new system, and we've just got to trial and error it and see what works. I think there's a, there's going to be an awful lot of that. You know, I mean, uh, we've used things like that well, let's let's talk about systems and, and processes so we we've used zoom and our, i was saying to jay before i've been on zoom practically from from nine o'clock in the morning to four o'clock in the evening for the last three days talking to various people those are conversations where i would have been out talking to somebody i would have got in the car and gone and seen them or they would have come to my office but we've just had it via a zoom call instead now zoom is something that we are used to using as i say we, we have our team meetings via zoom all the time um but a lot of people, it's been a new experience to them. And, and when something is new, no matter how technologically savvy you are, if somebody shows says, I want you to try this new thing, you, you go, you're a bit antsy about it. You're a bit like, oh, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to log in. I'm not sure. I've never used it before. I don't know how to use it. Um, and so that is, um, that is one of the things that I think we're going to have to think about in terms of who we're dealing with. You know, are we, are we um, making people feel comfortable? Are we enabling them? 
to to come and join our systems and processes in that way so that we can can carry on working in exactly the same way we have been how how do you do a lot on zoom don't you jenny yeah, no, I do a lot on Zoom. I used to do um, do a lot of in-person meetings, but I found it was counterproductive. Um, I'm here to try and help people save time. But then we were spending an hour travelling there, hour travelling back. It was three hours out your day. Whereas on Zoom, yeah. they with, with what you... Setting up a Zoom account is really, really easy, and you can have a free one. And you get up to 40 minutes on each call for free. Um, I've got a, a pro account. I think it works out at £15 a month. So I can have as long as I want on a call. So if I've got somebody on a call for an hour, two hours, three hours, it doesn't really matter. But I've got the option to record as well. So if we're recording sessions, it's really easy to do that. All I would say, GDPR is let the other person know that you are recording them. Don't just press yeah. record because uh, that's not uh, that's not legal. Um, but Zoom's really, really easy if you need video calls. But I mean, a lot of people that I work with, won't press the button to download zoom because zoom will download onto your laptop or onto your mobile phone as an app and a lot of people are scared of that technology you've got facebook messenger you can do a live video i do loads on that as well you've got whatsapp you can do a a, a video call on whatsapp you don't Mm. necessarily need to download any new systems if you're not comfortable with that We have already got a lot of resources available to us. We've just never really used them in this way before. All I would say is Zoom is possibly a more stable platform than WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. It seems to be less glitchy. But if you're not comfortable with it, use Facebook Messenger video. Use WhatsApp video. They work absolutely fantastic. You've got voice notes on both of those um, platforms as well. So if you've not got time to text because you're running round with bloody kids and everything else that's going on use voice notes to make things quicker for you so you can send a voice rather than you know texting something out i think adam i don't know whether we can hear him but he he mentioned to us this morning didn't he when we were discussing how we would do this um and because that's that's how much planning we put into it um but adam was saying that on office 365 they have a i think a shared system that's very Mm. similar to zoom so if you already have office 365 you you probably have these systems in place that are designed Mm. to help with remote working and things like that we we definitely can't hear you i don't think adam can we can we give you one last if we can't use oh can we hear adam we do yeah, use 365 teams um, we so, right. um, um and we are doing that to keep in general contact as well um but ultimately as well to be able to see each other so teams is certainly something that we use so um zoom oh jay's back hi jay um hi. Uh, so Teams is certainly something that we're getting the benefit of, or learning to use it. Um, you know, it's a fantastic resource if people do have Office 365 as well. Because mm. I think that you you work from home quite a lot, don't you, Vicky? So is your business based on in a remote way like that as no, well? No, no we, the head office is based over at Halifax um, in a piecemeal, um, but I go wherever the clients require. So some of that's home working, some of that's travel. Um, you know, so so I could be pitching up in an office, you know, um, Manchester, London, Glasgow, wh- wherever wherever the work takes me. Um, so certainly um, it's really important for me to keep in contact with my colleagues. So, so Teams is something that we do do from a video conferencing calling. Yeah, we we uh, we also use WhatsApp, and WhatsApp's been mentioned. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, we have we have a few WhatsApp groups um, for for the business, but mainly, you know, we have one main grow traffic WhatsApp group that everybody is in, and that we all use to comment. Well, it's supposed to be used to comment about work. Um, you know, it has such a body written this blog. Has anybody done the social media for blah blah blah? Um, but it, it recently as well, I mean, this has always been the case, but more recently, because we're working from home, um, it's become full filled with all sorts of rubbish because we're just doing general chat. We just chit chat on it. And Dali, my husband, he was saying like, well, I, this is, there's so much crap in the WhatsApp group. You know, I can't follow the actual work messages in there. And on the one hand, I get that. I understand that he's losing track of it and he doesn't like all the, the chit chat. He said he went quiet for about two hours yesterday and came back to 65 messages. So I do understand that, that that's a bit overwhelming. But on the other hand, I think at the moment, that is our only way of keeping in touch and having that kind of office community and all feeling like we're still in touch and did you watch this and have you seen that horrendous video with the celebrities singing Imagine and, you know, Alicia's bought a, a new uh, mask to kind of protect herself from coronavirus. You know, it's it's that kind of stuff that keeps us in touch as a company and, and keeps the company 
going um and i think that's really important so i don't know if anyone does anyone else jay you were saying you you, you don't use whatsapp very often but you have something similar don't you well, we i mean different things work for different people um i tried to use whatsapp but jordan my colleague doesn't like it because um there's lots of other personal groups and it's very easily uh, you, you can get distracted very easily or we can so we use something similar um you might have heard of slack so we used to use slack um, but our CRM has something built into it called Click, which is exactly the same thing. It's just internal messaging. So I think when we're working from home, you need that interaction, don't you? Because one thing that I'm really going to miss is office banter. I think that yes. keeps growing. Um, or I've got a problem, and like we did when we were on the call, Jordan, how do I do this? Because yeah. um, I'm useless at most things, so I ask all the time. So I think that interaction whether it's whatsapp whether it's slack whether it's click you need it yeah and i think you need that two-way conversation um and sometimes you need to make it a little bit personal say what did you have for your dinner last night or what was the yeah. breakfast you know what i mean it, it, it's it's having that balance isn't it it is absolutely it but it, it's it's so important that keeping connected we're back to mental health again and this absolutely. is going to be one of the biggest things i mean if you if you even if you take away the, the threat of coronavirus and the kids being at home from school, working from home can be quite isolating and can, you can make, you can start to feel like you're quite distant from the rest of the world. And one of the reasons I started going out networking was because I felt like it had just been too many occasions of me and the dog sat here on our own. And I was like, I've got to get out. I've got to start talking to actual humans and not just talking to the dog. Um, but that but that is that is the the key thing that you, you have that co cohesion and that you have that banter and that you feel like you're part of a team and you don't just feel like you've been thrown out on a limb and left and I think you yeah. know absolutely throw in the extra stresses of might we all catch coronavirus you know are our parents all right are our kids all right and um, the kids are going to be stuck at home which is going to drive us all absolutely bloody insane Um, you know that just having somebody that you can talk to and it doesn't even need to be a guys i'm struggling or uh, you know i'm feeling a bit shit today or i'm worried about something it could just be a this is a stupid video that I think, oh, isn't it funny you know and that i do think that's crucial it's absolutely. keeping connected isn't it to the people around you you know <clears throat> I, i'm massively massively proud and glad that i am part of you know the network that you guys are part of because if i wasn't part of that i'm probably going say no i mean that's got me through so many struggles trials you know all sorts of things just having a team of people around me that are all hungry for growth and positive not that you guys necessarily give me anything or you know you know pass me work or it's not that you're going hey jen there's a million pounds but it's just to have that connection around i mean like when we came on live this morning vicky looked like she was in um, something off the Works project i took a screenshot of it she had the whole team we've had a laugh it's just connecting to the to the outside world but i want to pull back on something um that you said before rachel it, WhatsApp groups are absolutely fantastic, but we obviously use them for business and we are missing vital information. Mm. Um, I use WhatsApp for the exactly the same reason. I've got a business WhatsApp account for clients to send me things through and then they send mem memes through and then it gets lost. I also use something called Trello. I don't know if you guys have heard of yeah. Trello. I've, yes, I've seen. We, we use Trello on occasions. It's regular. It's, yeah. it's amazing because you've got pipelines in there. You've got you've got different boards. It's like having a whiteboard at home where you can move things around. So if you've got a client, they've got a board, and then you can have access to all your team, and they can move that job along. So if they've done the blog, they can move on to be unfinished or in progress. Or So you, you don't have to necessarily message on WhatsApp who's done that, who's done that, who's done that. But also yeah. going back to um, kids, um obviously my no, opinion, yeah. we are not in a routine today i've kind of give up this week because we just kind of <laughs> threw it out the window we don't know what's happening let's leave it till next week next week we are in that routine you will get yeah. up at nine o'clock yeah. you will have school work schools yeah. are arranging parks for kids um they've all got online resources now i think the downside is people that don't have have access to resources in terms of laptops computers most of the stuff that our kids um a given on my maths or you know show my homework can be accessed on a mobile phone um and it's kind of look out for people that haven't got stuff like that to keep the kids entertained because these are the people that are going to be struggling they've yeah. not got access to anything like that and they're at home with the kids they're going to end up literally put them in a cupboard 
Yes. They were saying on the news tonight that a whole generation of children will have their education massively disrupted. And so if there is, I mean, Leon sees a tutor. He's like, he's doing this, he's left, this um, and so she she managed is going to carry on doing the sessions on on yeah. Zoom. Um, and I think if there is anything out there, resources that are available, yeah. it's, it's, it's important that we share that as well. Because a, you know, that's going to help the children if they've got uh, they can carry on doing some of the learning and keep. Oh, keep yeah. <laughs> well, B, you know, if they're doing some work, they're going to leave yeah. us. I'm, um, I'm connected to quite a lot of teachers on Facebook. I don't know how I've amassed yeah. 5,000 friends well, on Facebook because I must have like five friends in the real world. Um, <laughs> I'm connected to about 5,000 people. Quite a lot of them are teachers, not tutors, actual teachers in primary schools, secondary schools, and every single one of them has put a post out. If you need help, if you need support, if you need resources, come and ask. They will give you the resources that you need to support our future leaders. Because this isn't just about kids' education. These are our future leaders that are going to carry on with our generations in the future. They they do need this support. Yeah. And those, for me, it's not about the kid. My kids are cleverer than I am. They're coming home with work that I haven't got a clue. I'm like, I have to Google what you're doing. The teachers have also said that because they are aware there's a disconnect in terms of what the children are learning and what we learned when we were at school and how the strategies are different. There are teachers out there that are saying, I will jump on a Zoom call or a Skype call with you and I will teach you what your children are learning so you can help them. So mm -hmm. there is lots of things out there. Just ask for bloody help. Yeah. One, one, thing, sorry, one thing that I would also say as well in terms of talking about connectivity, using Zoom, Teams, Facebook to connect children. So my uh, the, the group year one that my one of my girls is in, a sense group together so once or twice a week we're going to do a first time where all the children can interact so even if it's yeah. 10 minutes 15 minutes they're still getting the interaction with the children that they would do every day and you know that's another way of being able to use social media to support the learning of, of those children and keep them connected with their social network as well mm. it is at least going to be crucial it's going to be crucial um i'm conscious we are running on uh, in terms of time so i we have had a couple of questions in um the the the, the main one that came through the, there's been a few people from our um, our friday brunch bni who've been uh, saying that they're here and they're watching so hello guys um hello. we also had a question from Catherine davis She's actually been made redundant. She's looking if she can do work at home as such as being a virtual assistant. She had a temp job this week working in a special needs school, which she's now lost. And she's just wondering, A, if we could help, but also if we've got any advice out there as to how she might find some work, maybe as a VA or anything like that. I mean, I know ordinarily what I would say here is get yourself networking and get yourself some networking groups and set yourself up as a virtual assistant and, and get out there. But obviously... <laughs> I think, can I come in there? Sorry. Um, the networks are all going online. Um, I don't know if Jay's talking there at the minute, so tell yeah, me. Yeah, 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 Jay's going to start, yeah. Okay. If Jay, go first, and then I'll come back to you, yeah. Jenny. Um, with regards to the person that asked the question, with regards to the virtual assistant, uh, obviously we've got Rob in our group. It might be good if we can kind of put the two people together to see mm. if it's a conversation. It might be a valuable resource for Rob, and it might help the person out a little bit in, 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 in this period. Um yeah. We have, we've also got um, Dan from, from Pertemps, who is in our networking group, so he would be a, a good connection for somebody to have, definitely. Jen, what were you going to say? Um, if anybody is looking at starting up a business, most of the networking organisations are going online. I know 4N are going online. Um, I don't know if um, Spark's yeah. going online, BNI's going yeah. online. There's lots Bob's of stuff online. that you can log into that you can actually network with people online. Get into Facebook groups, uh, connect with other people. All I would say is, do not ever go out there and post, and excuse my French, buy my shit. Mm. It doesn't work. Connect with people, build relationships, ask questions. Don't just go, I'm offering this at this price. What I would also say, if you um, have lost your job and you're looking at starting up a VA, PA, virtual assistant, anything like that, speak to the people you already know because you already know everybody you need to know in business. You already know them all. Speak to the people that you love and you trust and say, I'm struggling, I'm on my backside. 
this is what I'm wanting to do because this is what I'm good at. I can help businesses. Now, I know for a fact that within our network, we've got some people that are panicking because they have got too much work on. There are people out there that are in IT companies that have sold over 3,000 laptops in two days, okay? We've got people out there that are insurance brokers that have got that much work on. They're struggling to cope. Businesses do need extra support. So please do reach out to the people that you know, you love and you trust and say, I'm going to set this up. I need some money. I know people need help. Do you know anybody that needs help? Mm. I think actually it's really easy to think of this as, as like well, we're back to that kind of mindset. It is really easy to think of this as a, as a doom and gloom and all oh, the world's going to hell in a handcart. Actually, there is a great opportunity out there. It, you know, they always say the best time to set up a new business is in a recession because that the, the smart businesses are the ones who will now be looking at, right, how do we monopolize this? How do we make this work? How do we grow? How do we make sure we put ourselves in a position now so that when this all comes out, uh, you know, in six months and it's done, we've got, um, we've, we've got, uh, we're in the right position to, to make a success of it. So and if in ter just in terms of networking as well, the majority of the networks, the local ones, like Jenny says, there's, there's BNI, 4N, Spark and, and Bob are the main ones at the moment. They are all doing online networking. And because it's online, A, you don't have the, the, the traveling time and the time out of the office. You've literally just got an hour and a half to be on a Zoom call. They're also mostly doing it at a reduced price as well. And several are offering um, two for one. So if you, if you buy... The, the price of a normal networking session and you'll get two online networking sessions for the cost of that. The other benefit obviously is that because you're, you're not a, a, a regional, a, a locally positioned networking group, there's people coming into these networks now into these virtual networking meetings from all over the region, all over the country even. So it is actually a really, really good opportunity now to, to get into some of these networking meetings and use that as your chance to start telling people about your, your skills and what you can do. Because as Jenny says, there are so many businesses out there so many businesses are, are struggling and, and just in the short term are tightening the purse strings. But others, you know, the, they always say there's bad news is good news for somebody, isn't it? So there are others who will be making a packet out of this and are absolutely will be desperate for, for help. So that's good. Thank you. Guys, I don't mean to be rude. I'm going to I'm gonna have to shoot just because it is my little lad's birthday and we've been that's out at an hour, so I'm not being rude. If no, anybody no, no. does want to reach out and have a chat on Messenger, um, you know, have a free call, more than happy to advise anybody who's, who's struggling, who needs some support. But I'm going to have to love you and leave her and leave you no. all these sticks out. That's absolutely fine. Thank you very much, Jenny. We are, we're closing it up now anyway, but thank you so much for your time. Oh, I really appreciate yeah. it. Right, cheers, cheers, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Off the back of what Jen said as well, um, guys, what I would say is if you are wanting any support, what we are doing at Optimal People Business Services is offering some free uh, initial yeah. advice in terms of supporting businesses um, from people's perspective. You know, do we need to look at layoff, short time working? Is there a different way of looking at how we can be flexible, adaptable to be able to continue to, to protect the business and the and jobs? Because that's ultimately what it's about. So what I would say is if anybody is wanting any more information, drop me a line, um, you know, have a look at our website because, you know, we need to support, um, you know, to support businesses maintain where they are now. Yeah, brilliant. And I think just in terms of the other two that are on the line as well, Jay um, is, as I say, a telecoms expert. So if anyone does need to set the phone lines up so that they can divert from their office to the home, and Adam does the technology. So if you need laptops, systems, that you know, IT systems that will enable your staff to work from home, they can cover kind of all of those bases there. Catherine has said that she would like Jay to connect with Robin, please. So the comment will be on the Facebook, but I will put you two in touch. But if anybody what you do is want you know please comment on this when you watch it and we will leave your email address we'll get back mm -hmm. to you we will absolutely point you in the right direction there are yeah. a lot of businesses out there at the moment that are offering just just some free advice just to keep you know keep other businesses going so there is a lot of yeah. advice out there should you need it um, and that's it i'm going to say thank you very much to all of you for spending your time this morning to offer really really appreciated it um I, I hope we've been useful to people um and we'll maybe do another one of these soon if if there's um some need for it so all in all thank you guys and we'll see you soon thank Have you very much bye, bye. bye. bye.